Today, it is the World EV Day. That is the Electric Vehicle Day. And ET now has lined up a special programming to raise awareness about sustainable mobility. Remember, the government is targeting 30% EV penetration by 2030. And if that goal is achievable, how are we placed in this EV revolution? Sumit Chaturvedi is going to be setting the tone in terms of where we are in terms of this dynamic evolution of EV, which is electric vehicles. We're standing in front of an electric vehicle charging station in New Delhi. And this is one of the charging stations that are laid across the capital. But this is kind of situation that is in Delhi only in many parts of India. Well, there is a lack of charging infrastructure. That is the biggest challenge which electric vehicles are facing currently. We're talking about India's electric vehicle market. Well, definitely it's growing at a fast pace. There is a lot of excitement about the market. Models are being launched every month now, and India's EV market is definitely on a growth path. But there are many challenges. The biggest challenges we uh, talked about so far is the charging infra, which is not spread equally across the country. Second big uh, challenge is if you talk about the high price of the cars. Well, the cars, electric cars in India, well, they generally start between 10 to 15 lakh rupees. That is something which is often impediment so far as far as EVs are concerned. Range is also another issue, though many cars have come with good ranges. Uh, uh, customers, they want the higher ranges, which is available in currently the luxury, big luxury cars. However, lower sized cars, lower uh, uh, the average mileage cars, they are around 100 kilometers. That is something which is definitely uh, needed to be improved. If you talk about government side, well, they are pushing uh, the overall EV, EV sector. Fame 2 scheme uh, and now Fame 3 scheme is coming, which is going to push two-wheeler space. However, for car makers and other four-wheeler players, there is another uh, option emerging, which is of hybrid technology. So many challenges are there as far as EVs are concerned. However, India's EV market is currently at around $25 billion. It is projected to increase to $117 billion by 2032. And Niti Aayog, the think tank of government, says uh, around 70% all penetration of vehicles will be electric by 2032. Keeping all that in mind, well, definitely there's a bright future for India. Okay, a bright future for India indeed. Thank you so much for that, Sumit. But uh, let's welcome on board Vijay Nakra, the President Automotive Sector, Mahindra and Mahindra joining us on the show right now. Hi, good to be speaking with you. Well, it's a World EV Day and I'm sure it's a special day for you with the kind of transition m and has been making into that segment and uh, the vantage point it stands at. But I wanted to ask you, um, in terms of the adoption rate, are you a bit disappointed with the kind of adoption rate India has seen so far? Or do you think this is the natural progress that the rest of the global peers to followed? What's your sense on the India um, you know, uh, transition story as far as EV goes? for having me on the show. It indeed is a very special day today. Um, you know, your specific question on where we are on the EV journey, I just maybe want to dial back a little bit. And uh, first of all, you know, we strongly believe that EV is the only technology and the only way in the long term for three reasons. One, to solve the the, the emission targets that the country is set to become net zero by 2070 to reduce the oil import bill. We spent close to about $130 billion last year on the import of oil. And just by getting to the target of 30% penetration, we will be able to reduce over uh, 1 lakh crores uh, in terms of the import bill on oil. And the third one is, you know, when the global auto market was expanding and growing in the traditional internal combustion engine technology. India was not at scale. India did not have technology. And India was a very small player in the globe. But today, when you look at India, we are the third largest automobile country in the world. And this is our chance for India to become a significant global player in the automobile industry. So I think for these three reasons, EV is the ultimate answer in terms of automotive technology. Now, talking a little bit about our journey, you know, in 2018, the Prime Minister, the Honorable Prime Minister said, the focus needs to be on EV. In 2019, we had the FAME policy that came in. In 2020, um, the 
the the automotive um, uh, electric mobility policy came out saying that we should get to 30% penetration. In 2021, we saw PLI and PLI ACC come in. So the direction being set in terms of everything that needs to go to support EV penetration is in place. I think we are at early days for a number of reasons. Firstly, if you look at automotive EV technology in India, so far, most of the products that we've launched that have been launched in the country are ICE adopted electric vehicles. I think pure born EVs are yet to come. Mm -hmm. About 23 odd products are sure. in pipeline to be launched. So when that happens, with the continued focus from the government side in terms of the policies mm. and uh, you know, sort of investment being made by Indian automobile companies, I mean, 75,000 crores has been uh, committed by the Indian OEM players as compared to the government's PLI policy of 45,000 crores. So I think all of this will come together. We are at that cusp. It's a matter of a couple of years when we will see uh, the hockey stick spike happening in the EV, EV space in India. Fair enough. And, you know, we have so uh, definitely made some huge strides uh, when it comes to EV in India. But I wanted to also understand uh, some of the concerns and in particular with respect to the pricing and the high battery cost, because that is something that uh, maybe causes an aversion when it comes to consumers perceiving EV. Do you see some sort of a change in the overall pricing and how do you believe that the industry at large will deal with this? Yeah, you know, I think there are a couple of things on this. And firstly, if you look at last year at a global level, uh, the EV volume was about 14 million, up 35%. Globally, the EV penetration is sitting between 18 to 20%, uh, just compared to 2% in the year 2018. So I think we need to get to a certain level of scale. But the good news is uh, the cost of batteries has been coming down. Uh, we've been seeing that in the last 18, 18 to 12, 12 to 18 months. Um, I think what we need to focus on in India uh, are a couple of things. One, I think given that EV has been sort of, EV is the technology, destination technology to achieve all our objectives. I think we need consistency of focus on EVs from all quarters, um, which means the support that has been given to EVs should continue. Uh, we shouldn't see any changes uh, in terms of uh, alternate technologies being given any benefit, number one. Number two, uh, the ability for the country to set up scale, as I said, will take a little bit of time. Uh, the PLI policy, the PLI ACC, all of this will support, along with FAME, uh, to be able to get India to scale and set up the supply chain that we need to get the cost advantages. So I think those are the areas where we need to focus on. And of course, um, needless to say, I think charging infrastructure is an area where the country needs to put in uh, a lot of focus. And you know, just one more thing I'd like to add, as the technology on pure electric vehicles are changing, I mean, range anxiety has been an area of concern because of which charging has been a topic of uh, conversations. But if you look at the evolution on charging, it used to be 100 kilometers to a full charge. That moved to 200, 250. Now at about 300 plus. And with pure electric vehicles coming in, that will move in the range to 400 to 600 kilometers in real world user condition. I think so hence all of that, which is improving charging infrastructure, the range available through the new battery technologies, the kind of uh, customer experiences through technology that EVs, pure electric EVs will bring. I think all of this will come together to bring the advantage that we are looking for. Hi, good morning. Nikunj also joining in. I'll throw in one very uh, basic thing in how Indian buyers when they're buying a car they look at it which is that what is the resale value of this car if battery technology is cost is coming down obviously it means that the future ev cars would be cheaper if the future ev cars are cheaper which means the current ev which i have the future value of the terminal value of that car it keeps on depreciating higher now india is a very price sensitive market and i'm purely speaking from experience that every time we buy or change a car we also calculate that what would be the resale price of this car. 
So in the light of how technology is changing, what happens to the resale value of car? And on a relative basis, don't you think that is where the ICE car will command a premium over EV? Uh, well, Nikos, uh, I know this is one of the one of the concerns that the industry has been talking about. But I think we should not forget that today, since the industry has has got very limited products in limited segments. It's, it's early days to be able to determine the resale value of products. Today, we don't, we, you know, we don't even have uh, the organized uh, database to look at what is the resale value of products. But I think as the industry will grow, as the number of models that will be made available will change, price points today are straddled only in a certain segment. As the number of models at multiple price points will be available in the industry and category, Automatically, that will set a pace and direction for resale value, uh, number one. Number two, I think also as EV penetrations go up and they will become uh, the flavor of the day, just like how if you've seen in the last three to four years, SUVs have become the flavor um, in the PV space. That itself automatically causes increase in demand, which in turn helps improve resale value. And lastly, over a period of time, while cost of technology comes down, price points change over a period of time. And resale of vehicles typically happen over eight to 10 years. So I think that also will create a certain degree of balance between cost and price um, for the industry and ultimately for the customer who wants to lease, he or she wants to resale the, the product. Throw in one more ingredient in the melting pot. And, you know, the incumbents, which is the current auto companies, they are migrating from ICE to EV to hybrid. But in the EV space, competition has also intensified, especially in the two-wheeler and the four-wheeler space, with the entry of, let's say, the JSW group, with the entry of Murgapa group. Uh, so who has the right to win? I think that is what we would debate, discuss, and take the conversation forward. Remember, we are celebrating EV Day, and uh, we are looking at all the aspects of EV, from competition to technology, from affordability to investment, and from you know fundraising to uh, the way value migration will happen. Satinder uh, Baveja, Chief Commercial Officer with JSW MG Motor India, joins us. Uh, Satinder, now JSW Group has entered into the car space or the automobile space. Who to you? How do you see the market dynamics moving in this entire space? Because this is one space where a the current incumbents are trying to change and new competition would challenge the incumbents. How do you see the EV market moving and evolving and who has the right to win five years from now? Yeah. So morning, uh, Nikunj, and thank you for having me here. And uh, see, I think uh, I was I was listening to Vijay. Vijay has already put in a lot of things in the perspective. But I think the, the right to win people who are able to bring in the right technology, people who are able to bring in the afford technology at an affordable price going forward, and people who are able to create, help create infrastructure, EV infrastructure going forward. I think those are the, those are the organizations which will move forward. I think EV, as I was listening, is at a very nascent stage right now. While we are seeing a very positive move on the EV front, I think what is very important is given that there are certain category barriers and we've been talking about it, you talked about resale value, range anxiety and all that. I think over a period of time, these things will get addressed. And I'm very confident that going forward, EV will take, get the due space, what it deserves. And I also believe it is a collective responsibility of everyone. I think whether it is manufacturer or the government agencies, it is a collective responsibility of everyone to to move towards EV so that we are able to create a sustainable future. Point taken, Mr. Bajwa, but I understand you have a lot of launches lined up with one important one coming on September 11th itself. Talk to us about what kind of uh, uh, launches, especially in the EV segment that you've lined up for the next 12 months. So I think uh, we are going to be focused on new energy vehicles, clearly, and EV will be part of it going forward and uh, we have some exciting launches which are lined up and you talked about the 11th launch it's a pure ev platform which we are launching on 11th and going forward also we will have very exciting launches as i said in uh, nevs new energy vehicles 
And yes, EV is going to be an important uh, part of our portfolio going forward as well. It has been now also because almost 40% of what we retail today is our EV portfolio. Going forward also, I think we will be focused on uh, new energy vehicles and specifically the EVs. Uh, which I wanted your take as well from the house of m and What should we expect in terms of the launches? Because... Um, over the last 15 to 20 days, there is this increased uh, talk how perhaps Maruti was uh, the saner one to go into EVs at a slower pace uh, because perhaps the adoption and the sales haven't picked up as much as the street expected. Um, with respect to your launches? Well, uh, we've always said and I, we still maintain that EV is the long-term solution. Um, you know, some of the alternate technologies which is being spoken about are derivatives of internal combustion engine, which would not help uh, the country meet its the three objectives that I started my conversation with. Uh, EVs is the answer. We are committed to that. Um, we've already spoken about and said that in 2025, we will be bringing out uh, our first set of pure electric or born electric vehicles um, to the market. And of course, we have a much, uh, much more robust plan in terms of product offerings that we will have uh, over the next three to five years. But as to begin with, we bring in our first four products, uh, which happen in calendar year 2025. And we are very excited that when we bring, bring those products into the market, that's when the customer will really start experiencing the benefit of what truly pure electric vehicles are. Uh, and I think... That is ultimately what all of us need to keep in mind that it's the customer that needs to win at the end of the day. And whichever player is able to bring that to the market, they will have the right to it. And the kind of competition always helps for all players to think with keeping the customer at the center of what they're doing. Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Bajma, let me just get uh, extend that conversation with you, which is that in the entire category of EV, sedan, uh, SUV, luxury, if I'm just getting the you know classification right, where do you see the biggest disruption will happen? Where do you think the c customer uh, appetite is going to move? And where do you think the biggest innovation will happen? I'm just breaking it for our viewers. Entry level, stroke sedan, SUV, stroke luxury. So I, I believe SUV is is the most favored, uh, uh, you know, portfolio right now, whether you look at uh, ICE or you look at uh, hybrids. I think I personally see SUVs are going to find, uh, you know, a lot more uh, takers going forward also as far as EVs are concerned. And I think luxury also, I'm not too very sure because of the price point and all that, how that market, because the market itself is quite limited today. Uh, going forward also, I don't see. I personally feel that the mass segment SUVs, especially in a price bracket anywhere between 15 lakhs to 25 lakhs, is, is where there'll be a good playground for EVs. And th this is where people will find interest as far as EVs are concerned. In terms of the cost, where do you see the cost curve moving? If the battery prices are getting lowered, if the number of uh, components which are required to make an EV car are much less, if the logistic costs are better, if technology in semiconductor will ensure that chips will be sold at the price of wafers and wafers will be sold at the price of potato chips, then do you see the EV vehicles coming down in a gradual manner and ICE engine going up in a linear manner and five years out there would be a large gap between ICE and EV? No, I think, uh, Nikunj, EV as it is at a very nascent stage right now. So uh, I think I don't see that happening. EV has to grow. Uh, EV penetration has to grow because even if you look at today, we are hardly in the passenger car industry. We are at little over 2% EV penetration right now. So I think there is a huge scope for this uh, uh, segment to grow going forward very clearly. And even if you look at globally today, there are countries which are sitting at 20% plus of uh, total penetration is where the total penetration is of electric vehicles. So I don't see uh, we we are anywhere closer to that as of now. So I see uh, consistent growth over a period of time happening for EVs. I think what is more important is a very consistent 
policy over a period of time, a stable and a consistent policy, which will help the growth, drive growth for EVs. And second is also the customer education, I would say, is going to also be of prime importance. There are certain category barriers and we've been, you also spoke of some of them. I think the moment we are able to overcome most of those category barriers, EV will start to fly. That's that's what my take is. We'll start to fly, that's the word coming in. Satin to hold that thought, Anjali Ratan, Chairperson, Revolt Motors also joins us on the show. But just to complete that point about policy with Satin first, um, you think the government is uh, perhaps uh, making the decision to roll back some of those EV subsidies too soon? Because Mr. Gadkari was just speaking last week and he was of the view that EVs no longer need any subsidy or helping hand. Uh, they have seen quite a bit of pickup. What's your view on that? Because, of course, state governments are looking at perhaps giving a push to hybrid cars, etc. We have seen the case with UP, but uh, Centre is trying to roll back some of the subsidies which are there. I think uh, the industry still needs support because we are, we are at, as I said, at a very nascent stage. So this needs initial support and uh, we, we do expect Government has been very supportive. Let me put it across very clearly. Government has been very supportive and without their support, I don't think the industry would have even reached the stage where it has reached today. So I think some more, if the support is extended for some more period, this is certainly going to help, uh, you know, the faster adoption of EV vehicles by the consumers. While on one side, yes, there is definitely advantage when it comes to the GST for EV vehicles, which continues. And Minister has been very kind enough, uh, you know, that he said that that will continue and that will not be touched. But yes, on the certain state governments, which are today supporting the EV uh, in terms of registration, low registration or a zero registration cost, I think if state governments continue to support, extend their support for some more time till we, we reach a level where, you know, customers find this uh, whole uh, gamut of EV, uh, you know, sustainable. I think till then, I would expect the state governments to support and this will definitely help faster adoption of EVs. More support from the state government. Let me bring Anjali into the conversation as well. Anjali, hi, good to be speaking with you. Um, well, yes, it's World EV Day and we're talking about the adoption which has been there in four-wheelers and two-wheelers, but there's a lot of increased competition when it comes to two-wheelers. Ola Electric, of course, is growing by leaps and bounds. You also have a lot of other players like Aether, etc. doing well. Talk to us about your numbers, what kind of growth rates you've seen, uh, what's the market share right now and what the target is for you, let's say, by the end of the year. Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, good question. So we are uh, in uh, electric motorbike. Uh, probably if you talk about the market share today, we rule the market by almost 90%. So Re Revolt Motors is one of the top uh, companies into EV uh, bike section as per se. But uh, there are many scooter players in the market, but uh, there are very few uh, electric uh, motorbike companies. And uh, in terms of growth, we are uh, looking at... Uh, uh, great uh, uh, growth penetration, especially during the Diwali time. Uh, we'll be launching on 17th of September a commuter bike, which we, we think will be a great hit. Point taken that you expect it to be a great hit, uh, but I wanted to also get a sense as to, uh, you know, Bajaj, for instance, is launching its uh, bike as well, and that's going to be important with respect to the gas inputs coming in and how that completely changes the dynamics of the two wheelers as well. The, so that CNG bike, do you expect that to make a huge dent into your, uh, you know, addressable market? See, it could be an interim shift between uh, ICE and EV. But uh, personally, I don't think a CNG bike will take a, uh, will get a great show. Probably people have apprehension regarding the safety and many other concerns around it. This is what I hear. But I think EV is the ultimate uh, goal for India. And uh, I think everybody should look at it other than the, you know, any interim measures. Like this. Looks at the parallels here. The parallel in the two-wheeler market, scooter market, is that what's let's say, happened in Taiwan, what's happened in Thailand, what's happened in Vietnam. There are clear success stories about EV scooters doing very well. What is the global parallel for EV uh, motorcycles? It depends on the country as well. Like in India, two-third of the electric, uh, uh, two-third of the uh, auto market is of bikes. 
so which rule around 65 to 70%. So I think eventually in India, EV penetration of bike will be much more than scooter. It's just that there are like less players right now. I think Olai will be coming next year uh, with their bike as well. And many other players are also planning to, uh, to penetrate into electric bikes. So very soon, I think there'll be a big shift uh, like we had in scooters. It'll be in bikes as well. Uh, Mr. Bajwa, the whole uh, whole differentiating factor between an ICE vehicle and an EV vehicle is cost of running, which is that, and I'm just drawing a parallel here in the four-wheeler market, if one really looks at the cost of commuting in a city like Mumbai for even a sedan car, I think it runs into about 10 to 11 rupees per kilometer. Mumbai has a lot of traffic, so obviously cost is high. Similarly, in EV, it would be about 3 to 4 rupees per kilometer. Do you see this cost arbitrage, uh, Mr. Bajwa, only increasing as technology kicks in and that in a sense will make it more and more attractive for uh, a car buyer or EV car buyer? See, today also, if you look at it, the cost varies from 2 to 3 rupees a kilometer when it looks, when you see the EV vehicle compared to an ICE, which varies from 8 to 12 rupees. I think going forward, if the technology, and technology is going to evolve, and as we heard, the battery prices are coming down. EVs are going to become more lucrative. I think, Nikunj, what is important is it is just a matter of, uh, you know, the ecosystem getting developed. The moment the entire ecosystem, and you talked about the resale value and all that, Yes, consumer does have that, uh, you know, fear in his mind as of now. But I think the entire ecosystem will get developed very fast. Once that is done, you will see that this uh, this whole segment will start flying. Currently, if you look at it largely, it's it's the second buyer who already has a vehicle in his house who's basically opting for the EVs currently. Yes, range anxiety, all that stuff is there right now. So that's what I said, education is very important for EVs. And going forward, the way the technology is evolving, you will have the vehicles which will come with much higher range. So probably going forward in future, you will you will probably have a vehicle which you may have to recharge, which you will have to charge maybe twice or thrice in a month. You never know. I mean, the technology is moving so fast and is moving in that direction. So definitely the cost of operation of an ev going forward is definitely going to come down it's already at a it's already at a very affordable levels but going forward i'm sure it is further going to come so anjali i'll just wrap it up with one final question that there is a clear case in terms of cost saving per kilometer when it comes to ev uh, cars but in case of motorcycles uh, you know, you already get about 70 to 80 kilometers per liter. Where will the cost arbitrage move? And how do you see that impacting the motorcycle, uh, you know, sales? See, it's a, uh, buying an electric motorcycle or any two-wheeler, it's a no-brainer in terms of cost. So if you look at uh, the fuel uh, cost uh, increasing in India, and even, uh, you know, look at the uh, ICE bike sales cost as well. For last uh, several years, let's let's say for uh, seven years, the cost of a bike, which used to be 30,000, uh, it has gone up to even one lakh. So ICE, uh, as, as a bike, the cost is increasing over the years. And on top of it, the fuel and extra service costs as well. But if you look at the electric uh, motorbikes uh, or electric two-wheelers, uh, the cost of the bike or the scooter is coming down over the years. And when, you know, if if you talk about the battery cost of the battery technology, because EV is more about technology. And as we advance in terms of technology, the cost keep coming down. So eventually, I think it's right now, I, also I feel it's a no-brainer to buy a electric uh, scooter or a bike or even a car. And in coming years, I, I, I think government push should be there. There should be innovative measures when it comes to the state as well. For example, many of Anjali, the... can you give me some numbers? Uh, can you give me some numbers? You know, for example, with four wheelers, we have that number. It's about 10 to 11 rupees per uh, kilometer for a uh, ICE engine in Mumbai. In EV, it is about 2 to 3 rupees or 3 to 4 rupees. What is that arbitrage between a electric for motorcycle versus a ICE uh, motorcycle? It's 10%. Okay. Is that a good enough arbitrage? I mean, 10% is not large, unlike where four-wheelers have 70-80%. Uh, 
No, I think it's so it's a uh, ten uh, percent of the fuel cost. So that's the the electricity cost that is consumed. So it, if if it's hundred rupees uh, uh, per liter of the fuel, it comes to ten rupees for a single charge. Uh, saving is actually eighty to ninety percent. Like 80 to 90%. That's right. Wow. You live and you learn. I mean, I'm learning so much about EVs that uh, I'm really tempted to do a deep dive. Already we are doing a deep dive, but personally I would like to do a deep dive, understand how the technology and how the things are moving. Uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, Satinder, that uh, you have an EV car, right? Yes. And Anjali? How do you yes. commute to work? In, it cannot be a motorcycle. So this, this it cannot be a motorcycle. <laughs> No, no, no. So, you know, I have a motorcycle as well. I'm a biker. I have at home as well. But I bought an EV almost seven years back. And I remember I bought an EV just for the reason I don't have to go for servicing as much. I was not in India at that time. But um, eventually, when I started using it, the kind of convenient, convenience it gives you, I'm not going to the fuel station and, you know, not going to the service station for a, at least a girl like me. It, it becomes uh, so much convenient. Uh, when you are not uh, even in India or, or outside, and the kind of subsidy uh, given by, uh, I mean, many other countries as well as in India as well, it's quite uh, lucrative. And uh, like I was giving about any some of the innovative things that uh, like London did. They have a congestion charge. They don't have a congestion charge for EVs. They don't have a parking charge. It's very it's nominal, uh, almost like ten percent of what uh, ICE uh, cars are. So they're giving free parking. They're giving some subsidies to uh, to, to people. No con uh, congestion charge. You know, such such measures should be taken eventually oh. by states as well. Right. And, uh, Absolutely. I'm sure the industry can do with some more support. Thanks so much.